save it as a custom shape. So I'm just make sure I have it selected with this tool, not with the move tool, with the uh, selection tool. So this path selection tool, the black arrow. I selected the whole shape and then I go to edit and I choose define custom shape. Okay, with this we can easily save it. We can call it vanishing point. So let me just type in vanishing point. Okay. And it's saved already. So next time, let me just delete this layer. I press backspace and I click on OK. Next time, if I want to use the same shape, I just need to go to the shape options. I mean these vector tools. And I need to select custom shape tool. And from this drop down menu, I need to find the one that I saved which is probably going to be the last one. Okay, so here in the uh, list, the last one, I select that one. And when I click and drag, I can draw this shape. Make sure that one, when you're drawing it, you hold down shift to make it uh, symmetrical. Okay, so hold down shift. And then if you select the background layer, you can see your lines. So there's the vanishing point, and these are all the lines converging to the vanishing point. Now how to use this properly, I'll show you quickly an example. I just make it bigger with the free transform tool. Okay. And I'm going to decide where to put my horizon. I will probably keep it somewhere in the middle, but I'm going to put the vanishing point a little bit to the right, something like this. Okay. Now I can see my horizon line, but to make sure it's uh, easier to see. I'm going to use the line tool and I'm going to draw a line here in the middle. So I held down the shift key again to make it straight and horizontal line. So that's my vanishing point and that's my horizon line. Now once again if I start drawing something I can simply use the brush tool and draw a uh, free hand or use these lines. I can easily follow these lines now so once again, I'm just creating a box using these guidelines. Zoom a bit closer. So there's the box. When I draw the straight lines, like uh, vertical or horizontal lines, I hold down shift. Apart from that, I just simply use the lines. I follow the lines that I have on this grid. You can also change the opacity of the grid if it's a bit too distracting when you are drawing. You can select that layer, the shape layer, and uh, change the opacity. I'm just going to set it to 30, the opacity of that layer. So now you can see that by saving this custom shape, it's really simple to quickly set up a one point perspective. And we can even use it to draw like other shapes, like an ellipse. I just create an ellipse here on the bottom. Okay. And I would like to only see the outline, so I don't want a field shape. And for that, the easiest way is to use the stroke. So I'm going to set a layer style for this shape and I click on stroke and I set the color of the stro stroke to black and I set the size to one pixel and the position to center and I click on OK. But I still see the fill or the color fill in the middle. To get rid of that, I just turn down the fill opacity to 0%. So 0% like that. Okay, so now we can see through the circle and we only see the outline. Then I'm going to use uh, the move tool and hold down Alt to duplicate this ellipse. And I also hold down Shift to move it only up and not, uh, not to move it left or right. So keep it vertically aligned to the bottom one. And I would like to teach you just quickly how to uh, draw ellipses in perspective. Again, this is a big topic. I just want to quickly show you uh, how I usually uh, work with ellipses. So if the top of this shape, this cylinder shape, is aligned with the horizon, then the ellipse should be completely flat. So something like this. And I'm going to draw two lines. I select again the line tool 
and I hold down shift and let me just draw two lines okay so if the top of the cylinder is aligned to the horizon then it should be completely flat and just one line but if I select it again and I make it a bit bigger and then I move it down the further away the ellipse gets from the horizon the closer it will get to a perfect circle so for example I keep one here close to the uh, horizon line which will look something like this if it's further away then it will be something like this and the further away it gets the closer it will be to the shape at the bottom okay and it, it's the same if I go the other way so if I copy this one here on the top it will look like this if it's closer to the horizon again it will be similar to the other one on the other side of course it's not completely accurate but it gives you a rough idea how to work with ellipses in perspective we know how to work with one vanishing point but there are two point perspectives and three and four and five and even more point perspectives as well and I would like to show you examples of these um, here in this example I can show you a one point perspective as you can see this image uses one vanishing point uh, I can easily show it to you with our custom shape so once again I just select the custom shape and I'm going to draw uh, the vanishing point let me make it bigger and we can find the original vanishing point by moving this uh, layer around so first of all I'm concentrating here on the bottom on the line so I try to find where was the original vanishing point as you can see if I move it left or right it changes the lines change and I think this is quite close I need to move it down so it's also we also need to find the horizon so somewhere I think if I look at all the lines on the floor the vanishing, sh the vanishing point should be here somewhere and now I look at the lines on the right and yeah they are following these lines and it works on the left as well so we found the vanishing point in this case it's somewhere right in the center of the image of the whole composition so this is one point perspective while the next image uses two vanishing points it's really simple to see because the lines here on the left converge into somewhere here while the lines on the right converge somewhere to this point okay I'm not going to move the vanishing point around you can easily tell that these lines will meet somewhere here while the other lines will meet somewhere there that is called a two-point perspective Now, most of the times in real life uh, the two vanishing points are not this close to each other okay so they are a bit further away from each other I will show you an example uh, with a photograph where we can see the two-point perspective okay but if you move the vanishing points close to each other then you will get a very strong exaggerated perspective the similarity between one point perspective and two point perspective is that the vertical lines are straight okay so here in the one point, one point perspective we see vertical lines are straight and also in two point perspective they are straight but there is the next level the three point perspective where the vertical lines are also following a vanishing point so in this case I just uh, simply show you uh, with my brush that somewhere here there should be a vanishing point so that's one vanishing point then there should be somewhere here another vanishing point let me see somewhere I think somewhere here okay there's another vanishing point and probably the third one is somewhere here okay so if I extend some of these lines we don't always need to use the custom shape we can use the lines as well so for example if I extend 
this line yeah, and we can tell that I wasn't accurate so if I extend that line 